Hello, Knife and Oath family. My name is Clayton Graham. I'm a director of YC6, and uh, this is Devotionables, Brief Devotions for Busy People. Uh, we are here in uh, Exodus chapter 14 today, um, and in our passage, um, one of the things that we can do when we read the Bible is anytime we're reading particularly narratives, uh, we want to make sure that we pay attention to repetition. And the authors of Scripture don't actually have things like bold or italics or um, underlining to draw attention to what they want the readers to note. They use repeated words, themes, and phrases. And so in our passage today, we see the, at the beginning in verse 4, in the middle in verses 17 and 18, and at the very end in, in verses 30 and 31, that the author is trying to, uh, to draw our attention to the glory and the name of Yahweh. In the ancient Near East, um, the name is more than just um, the syllables or the utterances and the sounds that we make when we, when we say someone's name. Um, what they're trying to draw attention to is that a name represents someone's character, who they are, their reputation. And if you've been reading along with us in the book of Exodus, you might think that uh, this sounds familiar. Back in Exodus chapter 7, verse 5, this is exactly what Yahweh is doing through Moses when he confronts Pharaoh and he sends the ten plagues. It says in verse uh, 5 of chapter 7, The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. Yahweh is revealing himself through his interactions with Israel and their captors. So if one of Yahweh's purposes in the ten plagues and the Red Sea crossing is to reveal his character and tie his reputation to the people of Israel, we, then we need to ask ourselves, who is Yahweh? What do we learn about his character through how he interacts with others in the story? The first aspect of, Yah of God's character we'll notice in this passage is God's justice. We see that Yahweh is just in how he deals with Pharaoh and the Egyptians. We see that throughout the story up to this point, Moses makes mention of Yahweh hardening Pharaoh's heart. This hardening of Pharaoh's heart is not the manipulating of an otherwise innocent man's heart to rebel against Yahweh. Rather, the hardening of Pharaoh's heart is God giving him over to the wicked desires that were already in his heart. Yahweh's righteous wrath is seen in removing his presence that restrains the sinfulness of man's heart, thereby accelerating and intensifying Pharaoh's own destruction. Egypt and its pharaohs have dealt wickedly with Israel, and Yahweh's justice culminates in his destruction of Pharaoh and his armies by having the waters rush back upon them in this passage. The next aspect of Yahweh's character we see through this story is that Yahweh is slow to anger. While Yahweh's wrath is displayed in giving Pharaoh over to his own desires, each interaction with Moses and Aaron during the plagues was a display of Yahweh's patience. He chose to confront Pharaoh with each plague, giving him an opportunity to see who Yahweh is and then repent by letting the Israelites go. Consider how Yahweh interacts with Israel in our passage. They grumbled, they complained, they doubted Yahweh, and that the first sign of trouble in verses 10 through 12 they despair. Praise God that He is patient with us all. Which brings us to the next thing that we learn about Yahweh's character, is that He is merciful and gracious. Despite Israel failing to believe, despite their despairing of death, despite complaining and disparaging Yahweh's abundant provision in plundering Egypt, despite doubting Yahweh's deliverance through the ten plagues, despite all these things, at the first sign of trouble, they ascribe evil to Yahweh. Look in verses 11 and 12. They say to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than die in the wilderness. Despite their faithlessness, he is merciful in withholding judgment and gracious 
and still delivering them from bondage, setting them free from slavery to Egypt. The last aspect of Yahweh's character that we see in the Red Sea crossing is not only that Yahweh is just, He's slow to anger, He's merciful and gracious, but He is also powerful and strong enough to save. In verses 13 and 14, Moses says to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will work for you today. The Lord will fight for you, and you only have to be silent. And our passage ends in verses 30 and 31 with Moses recording, Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians. So how does Israel respond to Yahweh revealing himself through the plagues, the Passover, and the crossing of the Red Sea? In verse 31, Moses records, The people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord. Israel's response is our response. They respond in fear and belief at Yahweh revealing his character through the great power he used to save them and set them free from slavery to Egypt. We have a greater reason to respond in fear and belief, as Jesus has come to bring about a greater exodus for his people. Jesus came to satisfy the justice of Yahweh and the mercy and grace, and extend mercy and grace through his death on the cross. It is through the crucifixion of Jesus and his resurrection that we have been extended the opportunity to experience the power of God and be set free from our captors of sin and Satan. It is in the cross of Christ that we see the character of God on bright display. If we want to know what our God is like, then we need look no further than the cross.